I am a change man. I have finally, finally fallen in love with my M4 iPad Pro. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what's changed. What's changed in the way that I'm using it? What's changed in the way that I started to look at it? And why suddenly I can't get enough of it? My name's David, and in this video, we're talking iPad Pro. For a long time, it was me that was at fault. I knew that the iPad wasn't a Mac, but I couldn't decide exactly how it should fit into my workflow. Everything changed for me once I lifted it off the keyboard. Now, when I bought my M4 iPad Pro very nearly two years ago, I bought it with the Pencil, the Pencil Pro, and the Magic Keyboard. And that meant that I was trying to use the iPad from day one almost as a Mac replacement, and that was the mistake. Over the past few weeks, I've lifted the iPad off the Magic Keyboard and used it as a tablet. And a phrase I'm going to keep coming back to in this video is, don't forget, first and foremost, the iPad is a tablet. It was designed to be used as a touchscreen tablet. And once you take that on board, everything else begins to very quickly fall into place. Now, I realized that I hadn't even changed the dock pretty much since the day I took it out of the box. What I've done now is put all of my favorite apps in the dock so that they're quickly and readily accessible. And that has made a huge difference. We're all gonna vary, of course, as to what apps are essential to us, but there are a couple that I think you really need in that dock. One is a settings app. There's always something that you want to change quickly. And by having that settings app, rather than on your home screen in the dock, it means that it's always there within sight, just a touch and it's open and you can make those changes. And the other one is the files app. What's changed the way that I'm working with the iPad so much more now, particularly say with emails that have got attachments that I need to save and forward, is the downloads folder. And once you realize that the downloads folder is part of the files app and that you can save all those attachments quickly and easily into the downloads folder, it's pretty much the same as using on a Mac. Again, once you realize that's there, it makes a huge difference. So my suggestion would be, apart from the apps that you feel are essential to your daily workflow, make sure you've got the settings app and the files app in your dock. Honestly, that was pretty much the start of the game-changing experience for me. Now, as I said, a phrase I'm gonna keep coming back to is the iPad is first and foremost a touchscreen tablet. Lean into that, use it as it was intended to be used. Push the Pencil Pro to one side, push the keyboard to one side, and just enjoy using the tablet as it was supposed to be used. If we look at something simple, say like text, trying to select text with the cursor or with the pencil, it's vague, it's ponderous, but with your finger, it's great. You can select the text that you want. You can copy paste. It just works so much quicker with your fingers. In iPadOS 26, we've also got the file menu. Again, you can select with a pencil, but it, it just doesn't flow as nicely as dragging down from the top of the screen, open up the files app for whatever app you're in, and it's just so quick to get around and navigate in the files app once you use it as a tablet and begin using your finger. Tapping, pinching, zooming, it all is so much easier using your fingers on the iPad because first and foremost, it is a tablet. Now, something else that I've leaned into over the last couple of weeks that I never thought would be me is dictation. Now I've started to dictate emails to the iPad and then I use Apple Intelligence. I copy the text, select the text with my finger. Then I let Apple Intelligence clean it up, make any punctuation changes it needs to, change anything grammatically. And I've got an email ready to go. I've never used, it didn't feel comfortable using dictation on a Mac somehow, but on an iPad as a tablet, not only is it, it, it's a different way of working for sure, but it's an effective and efficient way of working. And if you haven't tried dictation on an iPad, give it a go. It's actually a really fun, cool, and quick way to work. If you've clicked on this video, then I'm guessing you are well aware of iPadOS 26 and the changes, the huge and meaningful changes that came with it. High on the list of those changes clearly is multitasking. And it now makes sense to be what multitasking is. Let's talk about Slido, for instance. That's back in the latest version of iPad OS 26. You've got Slido. You can get into it in a number of ways, and that's the thing with iPad. There's normally a couple of ways to get into the same feature. You can either now just drag an icon up from the dock and slide it straight over, or you can long press on the green dots using your finger, and you'll see the bottom option there is for Slido. Slido is really useful with something like music or podcasts. When you're working, you'll probably want something playing in the background, well, now you can open up the music app, select what you want to play, and then you can just pop it over into slide over, meaning you've still got the entire screen of your iPad left to work on. And now you can rearrange windows so much easier. You've put, well, you've got the traffic lights, as you know, so you can either just, again, long press on the green, and you can look at the layouts there, the four tiles or the 
side by side view, but equally you can do this kind of like wiggle and shift thing. And you can arrange the tiles as you want. Many times I don't even have tiles set to one side of the screen. I just have so many windows open. Then I use the five finger multi gesture to see what I've got open, select what I want to use, and then carry on working. Now I've got my head around what multitasking and this Windows option is like on an iPad. I know there is a limit to how many windows you can have open. I've not got to that point yet, but it's made a huge difference to how I use my iPad and how much work I can get done on the iPad. The only time now that I routinely put it onto the keyboard is when I'm typing and writing my blogs. I have tried using the on-screen keyboard and it's actually better believe it or not, it's more accurate, it doesn't freeze, it doesn't stick, you've got more options, but it is slower, just even, no matter what angle you have it set at, it's not as quick to type on as using the keyboard. So routinely, the only time I now have the keyboard set on the iPad is when I know I'm gonna be typing a long session like a story. But other than that, I'm using the iPad all of the time now off of the keyboard, and it's made a huge, huge difference. Something else that uh, still hinders iPad is some of the apps. Now, it's not iPad's fault, I think as the iPad finally has come to, to life and is finally beginning to be recognized for what it should be used for, app developers hopefully will spend some time and money and catch up with the apps that they've got available. YouTube Studio, YouTube itself, my accounts package, I happen to use something called Xero. The apps for those aren't great. For Xero, I use the web option. I just go on Safari and it's exactly as if I was using Xero on my Mac. For YouTube, I routinely go through that through Chrome now it actually works, it feels better to me using Chrome. And as I said a moment ago, there are always options with iPad. There's not only one way to do something. Find the way that works best for you, but first and foremost, remember that it is a tablet. Using your fingers and dragging windows around and rearranging using your fingers still works way better than trying to use the mouse or the pencil. Now the pencil, of course, is a really useful tool. I tend to use it now only when the iPad is connected to the keyboard. When it's on the keyboard, I kind of look at it as a different tool, then it is more Mac-esque, but the pencil has got some great features to it. The ones we all know about, for instance, it's pressure sensitive, which is really cool. It's hover, it's got double tap and squeeze, it's got haptic feedback, and Find My. It's a really useful tool. Also, if you're using something like Apple Notes, there's a feature in there which I came across that I didn't know until I started playing around with it over the last couple of weeks, it's called Auto Refine Handwriting. You'll find it down in the bottom lower uh, menu on Notes, for instance, and in some of the other apps for Apple as well and it makes a huge difference. If your handwriting is uh, not so clever like mine, it does a great job of tidying up. Now, occasionally I have gone to use an old fashioned notebook, but my handwriting is so bad, I go back to look at the notes I've taken. Say if I'm at an event and I've been taking a load of notes, I don't I often can't understand what my own handwriting is. With this auto refined handwriting feature that Apple offers you now, it makes a huge difference. So that's one of the times that it's great to use the pencil and this auto refine handwriting option that Apple have got. And again, it just makes the iPad come to life. It just seems to make sense. And because I'm using multitasking all of the time now, when I'm using the iPad, without exception, I'm using multitasking in one form or another, it makes sense to lean into using a secondary display. Now I've got these espresso displays, they are gorgeous. There are other options out there as well, but using a secondary display with the multitasking features we've got now makes so much more sense. Honestly, it just opens up so much more screen real estate. And if you're going out for the day, say to work remotely from a hot desk or if you're in a coffee shop, all you need is your iPad and a secondary display. And the beauty of something like these espresso ones is they don't draw down too much power. So you're still gonna get a good amount of work out of your iPad. Now, I said that I don't use the pencil all that much when I have been using it recently. Something I found I had here in the studio, which I'd totally forgotten about, was a magnetic screen protector. And that is beautiful to use. This one happens to be by ESR. There are others available out there. But then if I am using a pencil, you've got that kind of gritty paper-like feeling on it and it makes it kind of a joy to use because a pencil on the glass doesn't feel quite right. It feels alien. Once you put on this magnetic screen protector, and of course the benefit of it being a magnetic screen protector is the minute I finish using a pencil, I can remove it and get back to using the tablet as a gorgeous tandem OLED display to watch content on and enjoy all the color, all the contrast, all the vibrancy. It's the best of both worlds. When I first bought this M4 iPad Pro, I bought it with nano texture, but it wasn't for me because I wasn't utilizing it all the time, I'm not outside using, I don't need to work, worry about glare because if I'm in the studio, I can position it where there isn't any glare, but using a magnetic screen protector, best of both worlds. It's something I really think you ought to look into. And of course, once you're back in the studio or at home, the iPad comes into its own then as part of your 
Apple ecosystem. Not only have you got universal control, but you've got sidecar as well. So you have got a second display already set up for your Mac. The iPad then kind of morphs into being second fiddle. It just becomes part of the whole Apple ecosystem. So everything changed for me once I lifted my iPad off of the keyboard. If you haven't tried it yet and used it as a tablet that it was supposed to be, first and foremost, the iPad is a tablet. Do yourself a favor, spend a week or two. It took me a little while to get used to it. Spend a week or two playing with it and getting used to the functionality of using your fingers, using the iPad as it was intended to be used. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video where I've spoken about my fun and passion for the iPad. If you enjoyed this video, subscribing really does help. I've got big plans for the channel this year, big plans. If we can carry on at the rate of growth we had last year, we'll be touching 100,000 subs by the end of the year. And that's a dream come true. It seems a long way away, but with your help, I can get there. There are other ways you can get involved with the channel. I'm on Instagram. I post a picture every single day, D Talking Tech, if you want to see what my photography's like. There's a weekly newsletter that goes out as well. Totally free of charge. It's a video newsletter. The details are in the description. You just need to leave me your details on my website, talkingtechandaudio.com, and that will come to you every single Sunday lunchtime without fail. And we've also got a Discord server so you can chat with other Apple-minded people like yourself during the week and just discuss anything and any problems you might have. It's all there on our Discord server. Get involved. Let's make this channel something special in the year ahead. Now, if you've enjoyed watching this video about the M4 iPad Pro, I'm going to leave another one for you to watch. Now, where I wasn't quite as clear what the iPad meant to me as I am now.